kind of shrugged him and threw his hands a little bit there. Yeah, and shrugged his shoulders and threw his hands. So he expressed the luck in that. Watch the nine. He be lucky. Look at the nine! Look at the nine! Oh! <laughs> what a shot! What a the toothless pool player who came all the way from the Philippines has caught his opponent off guard when he began a winning streak, hustling in the United States, disguised as Caesar Morales. His autograph eventually gave his identity away, and from then on, he became an authority in the world of pool. Efren added a new dimension to what was once considered an American game. With his uncanny ability to pull off impossible shots, Efren has easily dominated the sports, frustrating even the most renowned billiard players. A decade after his arrival in the United States, the table has been turned 190 degrees in favor of Efren, as the Billiards Digest magazine named him Player of the Year as he became the first non-American winner of the US Open Nine Ball Championship. As if that wasn't enough, he took home the largest single winning purse in a pool event after defeating Earl Strickland in a three-day game scoring 120 to 117. Turn it around and win the in a heel hill thriller, 5-4. So his name is Meric Reshat. If you want to know a little more about him, I'm sure you can add him on Facebook. And um, yeah, let's get back to the match. It was a pretty, pretty easy mistake from Earl. Uh, he was not supposed to miss that seven ball, but as you all know, things happen. And it looks like uh, Efren is gonna take advantage of that and he's gonna extend his lead one more title was then added to him as the Billiards Digest magazine named him the best one-pocket player of all time. He also had the privilege to win the first televised WPA World Nine Ball Championship. Unassuming and humble, almost to a fault, Efren was a reluctant celebrity. He has graced covers of the most prestigious magazines and even made it to the list of Time Magazine's 60 Asian heroes, along with late Philippine and Singapore presidents Corazon Cory Aquino and Lee Na Yu, respectively. Efren earned his moniker The Magician because of his incredible ability to control the cue ball using unprecedented tricks and stunts. Watching Efren play is like watching a magician perform magic tricks, only that his audiences are grown men and large money is at stake. He wasn't named player of the decade for nothing. Pool legends had no choice but to respect Efren and fear him, despite his inconspicuous presence in the arena. Those who have seen him play know better than to fall for his begooling meekness. Hard to believe, but Efren is not doing it for show. Described by his opponents as the humblest player they've known, Efren is more than just an athlete. He is a role model for sportsmen and sportswomen of any discipline. Yeah, he was a little too straight in on that two ball. Now another safety. I've seen a lot of safeties I've raised yeah. this opening couple of games. Reyes defeated uh, Jamie Goodwin out of Battle Creek, Michigan, a young pro who had a really a great tournament. What a bank shot. He played the bank and the seven ball. Oh, boy. What a nice. For Efren, who was once motivated to play by money, he's seen enough fame and glory not to let the fortune get the better of him. Not unknown to many is Efren's humble beginnings. Everyone sees it in the way he conducts himself, without an iota of bragging even after a magical shot. Efren is a naturally well-grounded person, mainly due to the way he was brought up. If he can bank the seven and position the cue ball behind the one, 
and he'll be okay even well, if he, he misses the, the bank. So it was kind of free anyways. Look at the cue ball. Had he missed the bank, he wouldn't have had a shot. Okay, let's... He was born in Pampanga, Mexico on August 22, 1954, the middle child among a brood of nine. His parents have four more daughters and four sons, making it impossible for his barber father to fend for the family. Since his parents had no way of sustaining all their children, Efren was taken by his father to Manila, the capital of the Philippines. He was only five years old when he was left to the care of an uncle who owned a pool hall named Lucky 13. Efren literally grew up in the pool hall and slept on pool tables. Initially, billiards did not strike him as something interesting. However, upon observing that playing pool involves money, Efren began closely studying the game. Even before he began physically playing, Efren had mastered the game in his young mind. At night, he would sleep on his pool bed, dreaming of endless moves and tricks he had seen other players do. When he turned 8, he began messing with the cue stick. His uncle wasn't very happy about his interest in pool, as it distracted him from school and his duties in the hall. But Efren was unstoppable. He'd play in the morning before everyone else was up, and at night, just before he went to bed. Too small to reach the table, Efren would play standing atop empty Coca-Cola crates. He used to stand on two crates when he began playing, but while he lacked height, he compensated with audacity and determination. Efren was an eager student, and he took every opportunity to play, even if it meant having to skip school. This became the bone of concentration in his uncle's home. They were not so keen on having Efren play because they wanted him to focus on his studies. Because there was another Efren who played in Lucky 13, Efren was called Beta to tell them apart. From then on, he would be known to every Filipino as Efren Beta Rise, even though now he's a man nearing his 60s. There, however, wasn't any money at school, so Efren, with his troops, would go from one pool hall to another, challenging anyone for a game. Sometimes they'd win big, and other times they'd pick a fight instead, because their opponents wouldn't want to release the money, furious at being beaten by a teenager. It came to a point where Efren became too distracted by pool to focus on his studies. He then decided to just quit school altogether so he could play full-time and send money back home. Efren beat one player after another, and soon ran out of opponents. Not being able to earn out of hustling anymore, he decided to work for a comic printing press. He earned a money salary of 90 pesos a month, which was hardly enough to support his family back in Pompenga. After working there for a year, Efren decided to go back to pool, thinking there's no way for him to earn money apart from hustling. It didn't take long before his reputation as the best player in the world spread in Manila. When a book author came to the Philippines scouting for the best player around, he was led by fate to Efren. That did not thrill Efren though, as it spoiled his plans of going to the United States as an amateur player. No longer an unknown personality in pool, Efren still pushed through with his plan of going to the US and playing, albeit not as Efren Rice, Caesar Morales is actually one of his friends back home. Unaware that they were playing against the most distinguished pool player in the Philippines, his opponents were defeated one by one. <laughs> 